Hello, welcome to our third meeting at the CA. It is a pleasure for me to be with you once again, personally in this case uh, with some of you and through these videos with some others. I've been very, very pleased to see and to listen and to read all the comments you've made from the activities proposed in the previous meeting. Uh, I can see you have many ideas and it's wonderful that you now find the way to take these ideas into the classroom and to make things change a little bit uh, for our students and to, you know, in the end, reinforce creativity and make it a part of the English lesson. So I'm very, very happy with your productions and I thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, over the previous meeting we watched Toward the, towards the end of the, that meeting, we watched one very special and thought-provoking, uh, very sh short video, narrated video, which uh, in a way um, created the possibility of changing a traditional tale to meet dif different roles, uh, to meet uh, different standards, and probably that's the idea. Uh, what is it that we can provoke in students to change the perspective? Uh, we didn't have so much time to go through uh, that video um, in the previous meeting, so I'd like to just take a moment to come back to it today, just to tell you that it is very, you know, more often than not, that uh, English teachers find themselves in a awkward situation because we need to cover many of the um, uh, suggestions in the curriculum, and we also need to meet the new demands that school and education in general uh, set for us. Among those uh, requirements, uh, we need to talk about sex education. It is a topic that we may find sometimes difficult to um, start working with. We may find that it challenges our perceptions, our views, and it is, in a way, a little bit thorny, hot topic. Um, anyway, we need to go past those first um, feelings we may feel attached to uh, the whole idea behind sex education, just to embrace it in different ways. I believe that the video we had the chance to see in the previous meeting was just a nice opportunity to do that. What is it that happens when we are faced with the traditional tale? What is it that the traditional tale entails and implies in terms of the role of women, the role of men? Can we challenge those assumptions? I believe we can. And I believe we should. Um, it is good that we take the time to see through those stories and probably take them to the classroom just to move beyond the stereotype. It so happens that we assign different meanings to social practices that with time become a little bit fixed. Now times change and the roles we play in society do change as well. So I think it's a good opportunity for you to make the most of that because sex education is related to each and every single one of us, to our rights, to um, the role we play in society and it's not just about sexuality. Sexuality is part of it but sex education is much broader. So if we can lend a hand and help our students see what their role in society is, how it has changed and we can help them reflect upon their rights then it is worth provoking this in the classroom. Uh, I believe each teacher should know the way to proceed, but uh, probably these resources we find at hand these days can give us a hand and just take to the classroom the topic. What is it that girls are expected to do and to look like? And what do we expect from boys? Maybe we need to start questioning and challenging those ideas. So, I hope you, you get the chance and take some of these into your classes eventually. Um, as I've been telling you in previous meetings, uh, we know that we can contribute to intercultural awareness by putting these texts, representational texts, from different cultures in contact. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, they represent students' identities, that they represent students' ideas, even if we find some of them in the mother tongue, that we exploit them in the English lesson. Uh, it is very important that we aim at personal response when working with these texts, because um, they provoke reflection. Um, so 
probably working uh, on a personal response and reflection can be a way to provoke more creativity in the classroom using the language for more creative and uh, really communicative uh, processes. It is about textual intervention activities that Pope talks about and I believe this is what we can do. We can intervene texts and exploit them in the classroom in different ways. They invite students to adapt the text, to change it, to extend it creatively. Um, there are silences in the text, so can we work on those silences? Uh, they are left for the readers to feel with their own meaning and, and that's the point. Can we get there? It should probably give us many interesting things to discuss and lots of insight. Some suggestions for textual intervention. You can write a missing scene or a dialogue that is not there. You can change the point of view. You can imagine a character's thoughts and work from there. You can dramatize what is told. You can narrate what is communicated through dialogue. You can illustrate and then work on the visual and on the description of that visual. You can try the what if question just to provoke changes, uh, changes sorry, and just to provoke um, moving beyond the stereotype. You can ask the traditional change the ending or change the media. If it was visual, then we can think of other forms of representation. You can transfer to another context. Possibilities are many. These are just some that I hope you find, uh, in a way, um, you know, useful for your intervention in the classroom. Now, another activity that I propose for today, the first activity we are going to be working with uh, this morning. I am going to be showing you pictures that come from a story, from a book that has been written and that I believe can be taken into the classroom to exploit many things. The way that I'm going to proceed is I'm going to be showing you images from the story and I'm going to be asking you to think about the images. Remember, the course is all about visual narratives. So I need your ability to read images, to interpret images and to try to decode the messages that images are given us, right? As we do so, we're going to imagine a possible story. And this is an activity that I insist you can take into your classroom with your students. So let's take a look at the first image. What can you see? What is the setting? When can the action be taken place? Uh, we can see one character. Who is that character? What can you tell me about his attitude? What can you tell me about um, the place he finds himself in and how he is feeling? Now take a look at the second image. Now more characters come into play and I'm guessing you probably have made up, have made up your own mind in terms of who that um, character can be. We move ahead and we find another picture. Now probably some things have changed in terms of how the character feels or not and what the character is doing. Then we move on to the next one. What is that? What does that represent, do you think? We go on. Now, how is that related to the previous image? In what way do you think? Let your imagination go. The next image shows a, a picture that pretty much connects with the previous one, or does it? Well, you will tell me. And this time, what happens to that picture? We move on. Now we find the same character, but once again, maybe his uh, or her feelings have changed. Maybe he or she is feeling different, in a different way from the way she felt at the very beginning, he felt at the very beginning. We move on. And how has uh, his attitude, her attitude changed this far? We go on and we can see uh, changes. What do you attribute those changes to? What do you think is happening? Just let your imagination run. We move to the next one and now more characters and um, what is uh, 
do you think, what is uh, that they are looking at? Where are they? Why have they gathered round there? Next image. And you see, once again, two characters. What can they be talking about? This is a good opportunity to think of a strategy that implies creating a dialogue out of a scene when the dialogue is not there, probably. Well, uh, that's a good thing about visuals. They open up the possibility to work in different ways and to use a variety of resources. The story goes on. Now you have another character. What is uh, he doing, do you think? And at the very end, um, well, who is that character? Probably the one that, the, that began the story. And what is he doing, do you think? Well, uh, another one, that was the last one. This is the, sorry, that was the one before last. This is the last one. And um, maybe your imagination has taken you to different places. And maybe you have your own story in your head. Now I'm going to show you a short video for you to see what the real story is. The point is probably um, finding out what the writer and, and the person who drew this story had in mind for telling this story. It's an alternative story, or yours is an alternative story, and that is the point. This is why we are doing this. We also can uh, create this in the classroom, create the opportunity to um, work with stories, nice stories, stories that uh, provide us with different tools to analyze values, to analyze who we are, um, and at the same time create the opportunity for students to go ahead and think of their own stories. That is uh, what is worth about it. Now I'll give you just three or four minutes for you to take a look at the original story and then I'll be making some comments about it. The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, Now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn. Her dot, all framed in swirly gold. Hmm. I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never-before-used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted. A yellow dot, a green dot, a red dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow. She discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting. Lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots 
made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, Please, sign it.
The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, Now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment. Well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn. Her dot, all framed in swirly gold. Hmm, I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never-before-used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted. A yellow dot, a green dot, a red dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow. She discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting. Lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, Please, sign it.